crafty loving friends welcome to repurpose my way i'm shelly i love to rescue renew and have someone re-love the stuff that i like to make over so one of the things that i was having trouble with is just there's just not enough for me to go around do you know what i mean i'm pretty sure you do uh, if you notice here it's a little different than what we normally see my husband has been helping me kind of get a little station set up down here in my crafting area uh, we had some uh, changing around of stuff in here. This used to be where my tools were, uh, my machines that I used to cut wood out and things like that. Um, and we kind of flip flop things because this little room here has a wood stove in it and I don't usually use this room in the winter time. So I kind of flip flop things. My husband helped me put up some cabinets that I got at the Free Shack. If you don't know about the Free Shack, that is a place that people take things that they don't want anymore, yard sale, leftovers, uh, just stuff that they've cleaned out of their home, gar uh, garage, uh, wherever. And uh, people just go in and just grab stuff. And I find a lot of great stuff down there. So I did find some great cabinets and I was like, I want to put those up in my workshop and the pegboard and the whole thing. I'm still working on organizing down here and getting stuff done. But it looks like my husband is possibly going to be able to uh, help me a little bit more in my business and expand it even more and i have really been wanting to do craft kits for you guys uh, to be able to uh, offer those on my etsy shop i like to use etsy because the shipping is very in not very but it's more inexpensive than uh, just straight out shipping that you can get so a lot of the items that I sell online, I like to do that on Etsy because it's a little cheaper. Um, so, and we all know shipping is just crazy expensive. So I try to save money wherever I can for me and for you. So I would really like to get into doing craft kits and my husband said we can do that. Now we live, if you didn't know, we live off grid in Maine. So our home is solar. It's, it's completely off grid. There's no power lines in this area. There's no way to have power unless you had millions of dollars to get power poles put in and the whole thing. We're quite a ways away from power poles. So we have solar panels, we have battery storage, and we have generator backup. So a lot of the times when I'm cutting out things on items that need to be plugged on machines that need to be plugged in, um, the generator is probably running in the background or uh, we use a lot of battery operated tools that we can. I've tried to uh, update some of the items that we have so they're more power friendly like battery operated uh, but those are expensive and so we have a few things that still plug in here so we can't have like an, an x tool machine or a laser engraver or a laser cutout machine or whatever those are we can't have those here the power just would not uh, sustain very well with that so everything that we do will have to be cut out by hand on our machines and I think that kind of personalizes a little bit more. You're gonna have imperfections and um, it's not gonna be, every single one isn't gonna be perfect, but I think that makes things just kind of, kind of unique and different. So my husband, uh, I think is going to help me. This is all just kind of turning over right now and we're just trying to figure everything out. And, but I think he's going to help me cut out and make some craft kits. So in the future, within the next few weeks, once I get all of my stuff uh, that I'm going to need for this upcoming craft kit, I think we've decided what we're going to do. I've ordered everything that we're going to need. And I'm just waiting for everything to come in, inspect it, make sure it's what I want. Figure out pricing and how much I've spent and how much you know things can uh, be sold for. I will be offering that on my Etsy shop. So these kits are gonna come with handmade, hand cut out uh, wood pine pieces and it's where I'm gonna have everything in there for you to do. I'll be putting out a video. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a regular video or a live. That is another thing that I'm gonna be start doing is that I'm gonna be start doing, that I'm going to start doing is uh, lives. I'm going to try and do one live a week. I'm going to try. Please don't hold me to it. Things get really busy and crazy and life happens. We have family. We have things going on that uh, need to be 
done and I can't always just be right on it. I'm not really good at schedules. Uh, I can't schedule a certain video a certain day. That's just not how my life is. I'm retired, but even when you're retired, you're busy. You're busy with other things. And I really, really wanna focus on this, but it's just gonna take me a little bit of time to get in the groove, if you know what I mean. So uh, where everything is gonna be in the kit and uh, that you're gonna need, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'll put do a video showing how to put it together. Uh, and then from there, it's going to be just a simple, basic cutout and, and a kit. And then you can embellish as you see fit. Um, and if, or you can just leave it the way it is once you get it done, what I've given you. So I'm really excited to do this. I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do, so I said, so we're doing the craft kit. Um, I want to be, I want to do a few, I want to do an extra video a week. Again, don't hold me to it. I'm going to try. Uh, it may not be three, four, or five projects, but it may be just a couple. Um, but I want to bump up what I'm doing and I have a lot of stock of things and I want to get things cleaned out a little bit more organized and I want to offer some things to you. So I'm going to try and put smaller things on my Etsy shop again shipping is so expensive bigger heavier larger items cost so much money so unless i get an email saying i've got to have that um most stuff is going to go into my two booths that i have and then uh the smaller things that i can uh, put on etsy and uh have good shipping on and a good price i'm going to do that as well so those are some things that are going on uh, I also a while ago opened up my membership and I hadn't really been pushing it on YouTube for the membership. I've got a couple of members already. Thank you so much. I appreciate you supporting me and um, I'm hoping to have some more things to offer on there. So I want to do some more stencils. I've been selling my crow stencils like crazy. They've been, it, it's been a uh, pretty steady the past few weeks. I think somebody, some people have seen my, my crow videos and they've been buying those. And I think that's great. I'm so excited uh, to have those out there and have people uh, using them in their projects. It just gives you a, a, just a humble feeling, you know, it just makes you feel good. So, um, so I want to do some more, uh, stencils and get them out to you guys. And I try to do them the best that I can as far as pricing too. Um, in the membership, I wanna offer a printable. I am going to try to get a few ahead. So I haven't really nailed everything down yet. The only thing I've nailed down is that we're going to be doing a craft kit. And I think it's gonna be fun for the first craft kit because as you know, I do mostly primitive stuff. So this is gonna be kind of a primitive feel. I do have a kit for grubby and candles that I put on Etsy and it has uh, the candles and then my grubby mix that I make up and it has the Mod Podge, little bottle of Mod Podge, I think that's from Dollar Tree and some brushes or a brush. So that's very small scale uh, kit that you can buy and I, it may be sold out actually. So I'll have to get some more of those put on there in case anybody's interested. And um, that's a fun little kit if you've never grubbied before. Uh, it just kind of gives you an idea of what it's like and what it looks like when it's done. And then if you wanna do any more, there's enough grubby mix there. So it'll allow you to do some more stuff until you can get your own or whatever. So I think it's a fun kit. Um, so, Anyway, so we've got some fun stuff coming down the line and I just wanted to fill you in on that before we get to the projects. So let's get to the projects that I've done for you today and I'll let you know more in the coming weeks on when the craft kits will be open. This project, I picked this up at a local um, thrift store and paid, I think $10 for it. It's a nice big piece. Now I think this was like for a when we used to have telephones on the wall, I think there used to be a telephone. This is what this hole is for, because this is a little bit slanted, like you'd put a pad of paper and a pen on there to write your little notes who called and whatnot. 
So I was cleaning this up and it's kind of a dingy, dirty look. And I'm not sure, I think I wanna paint it cause I don't really like it. But I noticed as I was cleaning it up that it's got writing on it. Somebody didn't have a pad of paper. Um, so I was gonna try Magic Eraser first and see if it would come off. Uh, it's fading it. It is definitely fading it. But it's actually also making quite a quite a clean mark on there. I don't know if it had wax on it and it's taken that off too or what. But I did take that off for the most part. I'll keep working on it. This one's in pen, so I don't think that one's gonna come out. But I really like this little shelf. I snatched it up, even though it was $10. I think I can add something in the middle here to make it look primitive. And, oh, we've got a phone number over here. And, okay, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some cleaning up and I wanna make it look primitive. So I'll probably put either a piece of wood or cardboard with a picture, maybe decoupage something on it, and then attach it to the back. We're gonna start with Fusion's Woodwick. It's a nice, beautiful brown gray color. I absolutely love this color. And we're just gonna start painting. I'm gonna do the whole thing in this color. I cut out two pieces that are gonna go right on the front of my little shelf here. So it looks like there's drawers in there. And I have these two little scrap pieces of wood. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the front, so I'm gonna flip it over and drill a little hole. go it's gonna go right on there okay the drawers are gonna get the same color as the rest of it I picked this paper to go on the back so I cut out a piece of cardboard that would fit just a little bit bigger than the back of my little shelf and I have some Mod Podge and I'm going to just start in the middle, just random, no rhyme or reason, except I do want to get it centered pretty good. So. Had to go get my water, I'd forgotten it. Okay, get straight.
Okay, so I ripped it right here a little bit, pushed down a little too hard. I'm just gonna take a piece that, and just try and match it up the best that I can. It's not gonna be perfect, but I don't think you'll really notice once it's all dry. There we go. And then I got a couple pieces here, but I'm gonna go over that with a little bit of antique wax and that's gonna seep in there. And it's just gonna make it look like an old picture anyway. So those little pieces are okay, but it's just that great big one that really bugged me. So I'm gonna try and just cover that up a little bit. I'm going to cut this down. take some antique wax and wax up darken up some of these spots where I made boo-boos I do have some sandpaper here so I can get rid of these edges if I want I'm gonna put a little bit on these spots where I ripped the paper Hoping that'll sink in there a little bit. I did seal it with Mod Podge, but I'm hoping that it will still darken those spots up a little bit so they don't stand out as much. Let's do a little bit near the top here. Not gonna be able to see that anyway, really. There, I covered it up a little bit, kind of camouflaged it. Okay, so now I'm taking antique wax after I've sanded down the edges and I'm just going over it with going over the shelf with the antique wax. I want to darken up those parts that I sanded that went down to the wood and it also gives the brown, what's it called, woodwick color a little bit of a deeper, deeper aged look. Oops, we don't want that. Wipe it back. There we go. I think that looks really good. Nice and aged. So I'm gonna do this all over the whole thing and then it will be done.
have this really cool crate. It's very dirty, very banged up, which is fine. I don't mind that, but it's going to need to be cleaned up. And then I think I am going to spray it with a different kind of color that I haven't used before. This is Diamond Hard Repurpose Paint. I got this at Tractor Supply. And they had it marked down to $5. And I thought, that color is really cool. And I thought I could mat match it up with a piece of decoupage paper. And it would look really neat. So that's what color that's going to be. But I got to take it out. I got to clean it. Take it out. Sand it a little bit. And then I can spray it. This is very glossy paint. I want to get rid of some of that if I can. And then we're going to do some upcycling to this guy. I'm gonna add some lighter paint to the bottom of my little tote here so that when I put my decoupage paper on, it won't sink into that green paint and just kind of, I don't wanna lose the detail, I want it to pop. So by adding the lighter color underneath, just a layer is enough, that's all I need, and um, it should really help it pop, the details pop right out in the paper. Once I got all the paint down and it dried, I added some Mod Podge on one end and so that my paper would stick down. Did a little light coat on there and then I'm just trying to get it in there just right. I had cut it so that it was just right, but it does stretch a little bit when you, when you do this. So I'm just trying to get it in there so it fits in just the way it's supposed to. And then I'll work my way down underneath the paper with my Mod Podge. And then I'll go over the top with Mod Podge to get rid of any wrinkles and to seal it in. So to tone down this green paint, I want to use my antique wax. I had sanded around the edges and uh, distressed it some, not a lot because there was blue paint underneath this and I didn't want that to come back through. So when I did distress around the edges, I made sure I went right down to the wood instead of the paint, the layer of paint. And I'm hoping that the antique wax will stick to those raw edges that are there and also richen up the color of that green paint which it actually does, it works really well, and I like the color that it comes out as. For a final touch, I'm gonna to take my jute rope and go around the edges just to finish them off around the inside. I don't think it's going to hinder anything sitting in there and using it for displays and things, so I think it'll work just fine. And I'm also going to take a little bit and do a little rope handle that I did not get on video, but you'll see it in the end pictures here coming up. There's just a little bit of a handle that I put in the middle, and I think this came out really cute, and this color is so cool and different. Hope you enjoyed my projects today let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite what do you think of that green olive color i think it's pretty cool don't forget to like share and subscribe and have a great day